away from us is called Geyser Hill. And right in this area, we have about 150 other geysers. So it's a huge concentration of geysers uh, right just in this area. Um, I could tell you some names, but there's honestly a lot of them that we don't predict. They just kind of erupt whenever they feel like it. Um, some of our other predictable geysers are a little further down. They're going down that way. Um, you can't see any of them from here, but things like Daisy, Castle, Riverside, um, and Grand are the other predictable geysers, but they're all walking distance that direction. Okay. But technically what we're looking at across the way is called Geyser Hill. Over there. And it's aptly named. There's a whole lot going on over there. Yeah. What other questions? Yeah, I see a hand down here. Oh, we're going to get to that, so hold on to that thought. And, uh, and at the end of the program, if you still don't know, <laughs> but hopefully you'll know by the end. Of my talk. How old is it? That's a great question, and I won't get into that in my talk. So, um, Old Faithful, we don't know for sure, but we can tell you a couple of things that we've learned. So, when you look at Old Faithful, um, the cone, like where it's steaming right now, or the vent, um, those lumps that you see over there, we actually tested those lumps, and we were able to find out that there are actually tree stumps under those lumps. So that tells us that at some point, Old Faithful wasn't erupting such that trees could live there. When the geyser is erupting, the trees don't like it there. They can't survive in that sort of situation. And we've been able to date those trees. We think that they're about 700 years old. And so in the process of kind of learning that, we can assume that Old Faithful has been erupting maybe for about 700 years in the current Days. But the other thing that you can look for is actually around here, wherever you see these domes of kind of white rock, all that white rock is called geyserite. It's rock that forms from these geysers splashing the water out. That geyserite deposits really slowly, only about an inch per hundred years. So just by looking at how big some of these mounds are, you can tell there's been some sort of activity there for a long, long time. Yeah. So, good question. Right, and those of you that are just joining us, if you are short and you can't see me very well, feel free to come up and sit closer. Uh, there's plenty of space up here if you want to take a seat. Okay, and we're not starting just yet. We're just answering a couple of questions before we officially start. Can we sit all the way down the same height? Okay, be like, so I would prefer your feet not actually touching the, the ground, but you're welcome to sit right there. Yeah. Is it always the same height mostly or does it change? Oh, good question. So Old Faithful, when it erupts on average, is 140 feet tall, but it can range quite a bit. You know, some eruptions are more like 120 feet. Uh, a lot of them this winter were more like 160 feet tall, so it can vary quite widely. I think the tallest recorded eruption of Old Faithful was around 185 feet tall. And what comes, what comes out is just water? Correct, yeah. just water. And what we're seeing right. right now is just the steam. And it's plain yeah. water or does it have any other mix? mix? Yeah, good question. So it is water that has been traveling through the rock. And so as it travels through the rock and why it's so hot, it will pick up some of that rock and that's what gets deposited as guys are right. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's some mineral certainly in there too, but it's typically just regular old groundwater. Hold on to that thought too. I'm going to get to that in my talk here in just a minute. Yeah, it's a good question. Okay, let's take maybe one more question and then I'll get Do, an, do animals started. step inside this area? Do animals come around here? Yeah, and you might actually see some signs of it. Yeah. A couple of lumps of bison scat out there. So yeah, in fact, we have many bison that will travel through this area, no problem. Obviously, just like what I told you folks, I want you all to stay on the boardwalk because we never know if the ground is stable or not outside of the boardwalk area. And so the bison, they kind of take a chance by walking out there. For the most part, the bison seem to do okay and they walk through safely. Um, but what might have been solid today, tomorrow might be completely weakened because they walked on it today and they might fall in. So 
We do have our bison biologists consider death by hot springs here in Yellowstone as a natural process of death here for our bison. So it does happen occasionally. Um, but you can also think if you were standing here with me in the winter, we would have about four feet of snow all around us. Like this winter, we were standing on top of at least four feet of packed down snow. So it's a very, very snowy place. And when those bison are here, they're trying to eat the grass underneath all that snow. And so if you're in these warmer areas where that snow has melted out, obviously that's going to help you conserve energy and survive the winter longer. But that might also mean that you fall into a hot spring. So do you want to eat or do you want to risk it? So, All right, friends, let me turn on my microphone. Test, test, test. Oh. Okay, now can you all hear me okay? All right, perfect. We're gonna go ahead and get started on the today's geyser talk. Um, my name is Nicole, and I'm one of the interpretive rangers here in Yellowstone. Uh, so that just means my job is to interpret the park to visitors. So I get to help you all connect a little bit to this wild place that you all are visiting. And um, I've been here since 2009. I'm now a permanent ranger, so I get to live here year round. Whoa. So in case any of you are curious about what it's like in the winter, it's a really magical place, but it's a very different place mm. as well. Um, but today's talk, it's gonna be focused just on the geysers and hot springs, um, what we call hydrothermal features. And we're gonna dig into that in just a second. But before I dig into this talk, I would love to know just a little bit about you all. Give me a quick raise of hand if you have been here in Yellowstone before. All right, some of you have, great. But not all of you. Um, so I will say a very warm welcome back to those of you that have been here before and a welcome to all of you that have not. It's a long ways, I'm sure, for most of you to travel and a lot of money usually to get here too. So truly, thank you for taking the time for coming here. So as we do this talk, obviously I'm gonna be facing you all. You are my audience, not Old Faithful. And so that just means though, Old Faithful is the, the name of the game here today. It's the show. And so um, I need your help just a little bit. Old Faithful is going to do something, and I'll explain why in just a little bit, but Old Faithful will start having some splashing before it fully erupts. That splashing, we call that pre-play. And I would love to just see some thumbs up from you all as soon as you see some pre-play. Now, the pre-play can be anywhere from seconds to maybe 20 minutes before an eruption. Oh. So it doesn't tell me that it's going to erupt right now, but it does tell me that I have to quicken up my pace and get my words out before it erupts, okay? So just giving me that thumbs up will really help me out. Okay, all right, so let's dig into geysers and what they all are. You and I are standing in a really special place. So if you hadn't heard before, we were talking about how there are about 150 geysers just right here in the Old Faithful area. But within Yellowstone, there's about 500 active geysers. 500 geysers, and that is more than the world's, uh, more than half the world's combined geysers. So you and I are standing in a very special place where there's this huge concentration here. And of those 500 geysers, we have also about 10,000 hydrothermal features. Have any of you heard that word before? Yeah, maybe a few of you. It's probably not something that comes up in daily conversation though. So let's break down that word just really quick so we all understand what we're talking about. Okay, so what does hydro mean? Water. Water, very good, okay. And if you um, think about it, where do you suppose most of our water comes from here in Yellowstone? So like the water in the geysers, where does that water come from? Underneath the groundwater. Not the ocean, we're very long ways from the ocean. But the ground, but how did it get to the ground? Rain. rain. And oh, yeah. yeah, the river is the same idea. So any rain, any snow, I was talking about how much snow we get here. So all that rain and that snow, when it melts, it will percolate down into the ground and become the water that then becomes our rivers, but then also our geysers and hot springs, okay? So that's where the hydro part of that word comes from. Okay, how about thermal? Hot. Heat. 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 Very good. So, 
Today is a pretty nice day, but it's certainly not 200 degrees outside where that would be the temperature of the water coming out. So how in the world does our water get so hot? Lava. Earth score. <gasps> I'm hearing it. Lava. Score. Somebody mentioned lava. Mama. So raise your hand if you knew this. Currently today, you and I are standing on a volcano. How many of you knew that? Not everyone, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, so it turns out, yes, you and I are standing on top of a volcano right now. And this volcano, no, it's not active. We don't have any place in Yellowstone where there's lava spewing out. Uh, we also don't have a threat of any eruption like that happening anytime soon. So don't worry about that. Our geologists are studying our volcano closely and can tell us that it's not going to erupt within our lifetime. But it is still considered an active volcano because of the magma chamber that's still underground. So that magma chamber is so hot that it heats up all the rocks in the ground and then that heats up any water that's in the ground. And as soon as that water gets hot, then it wants to come to the surface. Okay. Oh, I see some thumbs up. Okay, thanks. As that water is traveling through the ground, it tries to get to the surface and it finds any cracks or fissures to come through. That's all called our plumbing system. Okay, and just to be clear, that plumbing system is not any kind of pipes or, or things that we humans have put into the ground, but it's just the natural cracks and fissures, okay? So as that water comes to the surface, it can become one of four types of hydrothermal features. So I mentioned one of them is a geyser, and we'll talk about those last, but I think it's important for you to know the other kinds as well. So what are some of the other types of hydrothermal feature that we have in the park? I want to hear some, some other guesses in the green shirt here. Mud pots. Okay, just one, but that's perfect. <laughs> mud pots, yes. Mud pots are my favorite. So mud pots are where there's gas coming out of the volcano and that gas makes an acidic condition that kind of dissolves the rocks and then that uh, mixes with any surface water we have. So rain and snow will affect how soupy or how thick those features are. If you go to Fountain Paint Pot, that's a great place to see some mud pots. Okay, so we've got geysers, we've got mud pots. What's another feature that we have? Hydrothermal feature. Okay, how about in the tan shirt there? Yeah. Hot very good, hot springs. So hot springs are very similar to geysers, but they are different in one important way, and we'll get there in just a second. But a hot spring is where there's a pool of hot water on the ground. And that's just where there's this nice flow of water coming through the ground and pools on the surface. And those are those really colorful, beautiful features that you see. And the hot springs, just a word of caution, right? All of these hydrothermal features, but in particular the hot springs, I think is where most people get in trouble. Our hot springs here in Yellowstone are not something that you can get into, right? All of our hot springs are extremely dangerous. They can either be very hot or acidic. Either way, you don't want to get in them. So please, again, stay on the boardwalks when you're here visiting. Take your photos, but please don't touch. Okay, so we've got geysers, mud pots, hot springs, what's our last hydrothermal feature? Okay, how about you in the front here? Oh, good question. Old Faithful is the steaming thing right here. Okay, what else? You got it, very good. A fumarole. A fumarole is a steam vent. So there's not enough water to get to the surface, but there's still water down there somewhere that's getting hot enough to make some steam. Okay, if you drive by uh, Roaring Mountain, that's a good place to see fumarole. All right, so what makes geysers so unique though? Right, I said that there are 10,000 hydrothermal features and only 500 of those though are, okay, only 500 of those are geysers. So when Old Faithful will actually erupt, that pre-play just keeps getting taller and taller and taller. If it stops, then that's still considered pre-play. So we're still good. <laughs> but I will wrap things up here quickly. All right, so when we have a geyser, there's something very different about them that's unique. And that's, what do you think? I'm gonna ask you all. What's different between a hot spring and a geyser in particular? Uh, how about you in the black shirt right there? Yep. Uh, geysers uh, sh have, uh, shoot water, but yeah. hot springs don't. You got it. So the geysers shoot water for some reason, but the hot springs don't. What causes the water to shoot? What do you think? 
Pressure? <laughs> pressure, you got it. Very good. Okay, so a geyser has pressure somewhere in its plumbing system because of a constriction point. And we know about that if we're old faithful. So I'll show you on this map here. So back in the early 90s, we put a camera down into Old Faithful. There's a YouTube video of this if you ever want to watch it. But we put this camera down and 20 feet below the surface, we found a spot. If you hold out your fist, it's only that width. It's only about four inches wide, 20 feet down. So when Old Faithful is trying to erupt, it's trying to have about 8,000 gallons of water come through that spot that's only the width of your fist. So just like if you put your thumb over the tip of the garden hose, you're gonna create some pressure in that system, right? By not allowing the water to come through as freely. So because of that, you are creating a pressurized system which allows the water to shoot higher. And for Old Faithful, we've got this big chamber of water that's filling underneath the ground. This chamber of water is really hot in there, but because of that constriction point, it can't go anywhere. So it just builds and builds in pressure. Eventually that pressure has to go somewhere. And so eventually just a little bit of water will come out and that's what that pre-play is. Eventually though, that pre-play has to turn into the actual eruption. So that pressure gets released mm -hmm and will create the amazing eruption that hopefully you're all about to see here very shortly. So when Old Faithful erupts, it erupts for anywhere between a minute and a half to five minutes, and it can get up to about 140 feet tall on average. So it can get taller, but that's the average. And what we are doing is we have a ranger inside the visitor center, and that ranger has a stopwatch in their hand. And what they're gonna be doing is timing Old Faithful's eruption. So depending on how long the water shoots out for is what we use to calculate how long it's gonna take until the next eruption. Because it all is about time, right? How long it takes for this pressure system to get to the place where it has to erupt again, that is all just math. And we've been studying Old Faithful for so long, we have those statistics to use to create those predictions. So, while you are standing here and getting ready for Old Faithful's eruption, I truly want you to soak this up. This is a very special place to be where you're getting to watch this natural process happen before your eyes. And knowing that it's been doing this for a very long time, but also knowing that it won't do this forever. Oh. So what we have to do now is truly soak in this moment. And when you go home to your friends and family, I truly hope that you tell them about how cool this place is. And by you being here, tells us that this is important to you all, right? That you care about this place. And for that, all of my ranger colleagues, we are truly thankful. Without you all, we would not have a job and we would not be here. So truly, thank you. But soak it up, be safe, stay on the boardwalks, <laughs> and enjoy the show. Thank you.